Would you stand with me? We're going to go right into prayer tonight. Let's remember those who are fighting cancer. Let's remember Dave Tarrant uh, tonight who suffered a stroke. Let's remember these that need our, our prayers tonight. Many of them are depending on us tonight. Amen? Would you turn to your neighbor and tell him, I love you and you can't do nothing about it. Amen? Tell him, I love you and you can't do nothing about it. Praise Lord. If you would, repeat after me and say, this is the best day and the best year that I've ever had because Jesus is with me. One more time. This is the best day and the best year that I've ever had because Jesus is with me. Let's give him a clap offering tonight, if you would. <laughs> Praise the Lord. If you're near someone or if you want to pray, just right there. Let's agree together for the service tonight. Let's allow God's Holy Spirit to bless us. We're glad for each one that's here. Let's let the Lord have his way. Amen. Father, we thank you tonight in the mighty name of Jesus for this wonderful opportunity to be in your house. And Lord, once again, we invite your presence into our midst. Lord, we ask you to bless the music portion of our service tonight and the spoken word. Lord, we ask you to lift up each and every one that's sick in body, God. We pray for every one of these that are fighting cancer tonight. Remember David Tieran tonight, who suffered a stroke. God, we ask you to touch him in his body. Let them receive complete healing and deliverance, God, in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, we're asking you tonight to walk up and down the aisles of our church. We're asking you to touch your people on tonight. We've come to worship you and to give you glory. Lord, may you honor our efforts on tonight. Lord, all those on the highways, Lord, we're asking you to keep them safe tonight. We'll give you the glory and the praise and the honor. We lift up everyone that has special needs and requests tonight. Lord, we ask you to move by your spirit. And Lord, by the time we say the last amen, may you have met every need in this place. Lord, we'll give you the glory. We'll give you the praise and the honor. We ask these things tonight in your name, the name of Jesus, and everyone said, Amen. Amen. Let's give him a clap off for me if you would. Let's praise the Lord. Let's worship the Lord. Amen.
Give me us your son and me. 
Thank you. 
Praise the Lord. Let's lift our hands one more time to the Lord tonight. Hallelujah. Lord, we praise you and honor you tonight. Lord, hallelujah. Lord, we give you glory and honor. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, we bless your wonderful name and give you praise tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you for your presence, Lord. We honor your presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, we praise you, Lord. We give you all the glory and all the praise and all the honor, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Bless your wonderful name, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you for your wonderful blessings, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, we honor you to this night, Lord. We give you glory. Bless the wonderful name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. One more time tonight, would you turn to your neighbor and tell him, I love you, and you can't do nothing about it. Amen. Tell him, I love you, and you can't do nothing about it. Amen. Let's give our praise team a hand tonight, if you would. Praise the Lord. Let's tell the Lord, thank you. We're going to ask our brother Johnny if he'll come and receive our evening tithe and offering. Praise the Lord. Amen. Good evening, everyone. You know, this morning, as I was in prayer, I saw a vision. It spoke to me. It was pondering. As I was pondering it, um, I didn't really know exactly what it meant. But as I thought about it and I prayed, Lord, Help me to discern this vision and what I'm seeing here. And as he did so, turns out that we were late this morning for church. This is part of the reason why. And during church service, the service was about what I was seeing. And I saw myself going out the 60 freeway. Me and Rosalind were a Prius, of all things, which was very humbling to me. Because I told myself I would never drive a Prius. I used to street race a long time ago, and I just liked the power and the speed. And um, I was in this Prius. Me and Ross were going, and we were about to take the exit to go off to work. And this big black truck, a dually, I guess, came up, and I tried to speed up, and didn't speed up. I tried to go slower, and he, he would go slower. He would not let me get over to get to where I needed to go to to go to work. Roz and I were there, and she was there humble and praying, and I was there, not clipping the guy out, but telling the guy, get out of the way, you dummy. <laughs> and that's where it stopped. And I thought about this all this time. Sometimes you're supposed to go out and do the work of the Lord, but something gets in your way. Something stops, something hinders you from getting to where you're supposed to be. And I like our prayer this morning, Pastor, because it was, if you weren't completely, I don't know how to say it, but basically, if you want the Lord, if you're leaving the Lord to do his work, Pastor asked us to raise our hands if we wanted to know the Lord's will for our lives. And so we raise our hands because there's something he gives it to us. He gives us a, a, a direction. He wants us to do something for him, but we don't know what to do. We're not ready for it, maybe. Maybe there's an enemy. There's something in our lives that we need to get right with God. Maybe there's something that we need to do more for him first before he can completely use us. If you're there tonight, think about that. Humble yourself even more so that you can be used completely by God. Maybe you're already on the road, but there's still there's one thing that's stopping you completely. You know, my brother, I know your name, Stephen. He said something to me. He said, what, I, what you speak out there is real because it's like you're one of us. And I am one of you. Yeah. I mean, I'm coming from the streets. God has completely flipped my life around, changed me completely. And he's using me. And I see it. In Psalm 35, verse 26, it says, let them be put to shame and disappointed altogether who rejoice at my calamity. Let them be clothed with shame and dishonor who magnify themselves against me. Let those who delight in my righteousness shout for joy and be glad and say evermore, great is the Lord who delights in the welfare of his servant. Then my tongue shall tell of your righteousness and of your praise all the day long. 
He is for you today. He delights in you today. Yeah. Your enemy will never shout and triumph over you for the Lord is with you. Remember that and draw as close to him as you possibly can. I know I am. Today is a turning point for me, Pastor. I want to get to know the Lord more and more and more so that when I come to that place where the enemy is there to stop me, I won't have to do it, but God will be there for me. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Heavenly Father God, for this time. Lord Father God, as we're here, Father God, we're here for you completely. Lord, Father God, help us, Father God, to gain an instruction, Father God. Help us to understand your words tonight, Heavenly Father God. As we receive this offering, Father God, we ask you bless it, Father God. Multiply it, Father God, to meet all of the needs of this ministry, Father God. That these doors will remain open, Heavenly Father God. That we continue to have a place, Father God, to come and to be filled with your presence, Father God. To fellowship with you, Lord, Father God, and others around you, Heavenly Father God, who you call to be in your house, Lord, Father God. We thank you and praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. And bring your offering. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. We have uh, our re uh, announcements on the screen up here. As you look on the screen, um, we have uh, Pastor Dan is going to be with us in the month of March for second and third Sundays and the second and third Wednesdays as well. On the 15th, he's going to be with us with the Bible study here that Saturday at 9 o'clock. We want to encourage you all to come. Uh, next week is Daylight Savings Time, and we're turning our clocks ahead one hour next Saturday night so you can be to church on Sunday on time. Amen. And not miss it like I did the first three years as a Christian. Amen. Actually, I missed Sunday school. I didn't miss church. Amen. But let's turn our clocks ahead next week. Amen. Uh, Easter is coming very quickly. It's the 20th of next month, but we're going to, uh, it will be on us pretty quickly. Amen. Uh, the ladies are meeting next Saturday, right? Is that correct? Saturday coming up, and it will be at 1030 at Potluck in the Fellowship Hall. And uh, we're joining our men with the Bible study because it's on the third Saturday. So we want to encourage you to come out. Amen. Praise the Lord. We are praying here Monday through Friday at 9 a.m. Those of you that would like to come out is appreciated, and I know not all of you can. So please join us in prayer wherever you are, uh, break time, lunch time, or any time. Just join with us in prayer that God will have his way. Praise the Lord. Amen. I think that's everything that's on there. Brother, you had a testimony. Would you stand? That was a great song service. I, I really hope to hear the volume up there. And I don't think it was uh, the sound man the microphone. Did. And that's what we do as leaders. We have leaders. I don't know if I have to see this. But here's leaders in different uh, structures of the, of the church. Um, this is the best year I'm going to have. It's pretty much the best day I ever had. And Jesus was with me before. But I never said that. I never spoke it. And the Bible says, I have that verse in, in my Bible, um, the Bible says, speak what you believe will happen, and it will be yours. Like if I say I want to have an apartment, and I believe it, it's going to be mine. Um, it also says, believe in your heart, confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you're saved. You're not going to be saved unless you confess it with your mouth. Because he hears you. Um, so I just enjoy testifying. The Bible says you defeat the enemy by the word of your testimony. For example, if you, if you are observed with alcoholism and you testify about it, you defeat the enemy by the words of your testimony. And you don't have to be a preacher behind the pulpit or have the gift of a pastor. Um, the Bible says the Holy Spirit, you know, receives power to be witnesses. Amen. And I like to share our Sunday school. And um, our church is growing. And we have a men's meeting here. Um, I found out about this church by coming here on Tuesday night dinner where everybody's welcome. And now we're getting the parents uh, more involved in the church, what the children are doing. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Actually, Mark 10, um, 
about verse 30 says that he will give you houses and brethren and lands 100 fold with persecution so God will make a place for you this day amen he will make provision for you amen praise the Lord well tonight let's uh, why don't we turn to our Bibles tonight we're going to be in Acts chapter 3 Acts chapter 3 tonight and I want to share a few things out of there I'm glad for Sunday evening service. I've been doing Sunday evening service for a lot of years. I really enjoy being here on Sunday night. I like it because there's always seems to be things that I battle through the week. And I call this my double portion blessing for Sunday. So I want a double portion tonight. Amen. Praise the Lord. If you would turn to Acts chapter 3, we're going to ask Brother Johnny, would you ask the blessing on the word tonight, please? Amen. Let's start in uh, verse 12 tonight, chapter 3. In verse 12 it says, And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this, or why look ye so earnestly on us, as though by our own power or holiness we had made this man to walk? The God of Abraham, and of Isaac, and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, hath glorified his son Jesus, whom he delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate, when he was determined to let him go. But he denied the Holy One and the just, and desired a murder to be granted unto you, that's Barabbas, and killed the Prince of Life, whom God hath raised from the dead, whom ye, we are witnesses. And his name, through faith in his name, hath made this man strong, whom ye see and know. Yea, the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. And now, brethren, I walk that through ignorance ye did it, as did also your rulers. But those things which God before had showed by the mouth of all his prophets that Christ should suffer, he has so fulfilled. Verse 19, Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. And he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you, whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things, which God had spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. For Moses truly said unto the fathers, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren, like unto me, him shall ye hear in all things, whosoever he shall, uh, whatsoever he shall say unto you. And it shall come to pass that every soul which will not hear that prophet shall be destroyed from among the people. Yea, and all the prophet from Samuel and those that follow after, as many as have spoken, have likewise foretold of these days. We're going to stop right there, and we're going to uh, minister on this passage of Scripture. I wanted to emphasize some things tonight, and for those of you who don't know this story, this is the story where Peter and John were going up to the temple and the lame man was at the gate and as they approached him the Bible says he looked at them expecting to receive something from them and when Peter and John looked on, on him they said silver and gold have we none but such have we given unto thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth rise up and walk and the man who was lame that all the people knew who he was, 
was healed instantly. And, and when Peter pulled him up, he began walking and leaping and praising God, and he went into the temple. And uh, as we are uh, rehearsing this story, we realize that Peter made a statement here, and he's including John in it, that neither he nor John's righteousness made this man well or whole. But the name of Jesus, through faith in that name, caused this man to be healed. Uh, I shared it many times, but we'll go over it again tonight. Many people have said that when the apostles died, so did the miracles. And here, this story says that the apostles had nothing to do with the miracles. That Jesus himself, his name, his suffering, taking the 39 stripes, has caused people to receive their healing. So if, if all the apostles died, it wouldn't make a difference because healing doesn't come from apostles. It comes from Jesus. As far as that's concerned, so does everything else. Forgiveness of sin, deliverance, anything else comes from Jesus, his name, his offering, his sacrifice. Everything comes from that sacrifice that Jesus gave us. Amen? In this story... Uh, Peter is preaching to the people and he's teaching them certain things. And I want to spend some time tonight on the fact that Peter made a statement. They saw this great miracle. They saw this great thing happen before their eyes. They saw this man that was lame get up and began to walk and leap and praise the Lord. And they are curious as to how this happened. And Peter makes a statement to them. And he says, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of the Lord, and you shall receive remission of your sins. And times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Now, unfortunately, today you can hear all kinds of teaching. And unfortunately today, people say you don't have to repent anymore. Uh, that once Jesus died on the cross, that all of a sudden forgiveness of sin is automatic and you don't have to do anything. Well, here Peter, now what I want you to understand here, Peter was one of the men that spent three years with Jesus or a little more. Peter walked with Jesus. Peter talked with Jesus. Peter heard Jesus preach. Peter saw Jesus do miracles. Peter saw the life of Jesus and all the great things that he did. Now, my question to you, you can believe modern day people or you can believe Peter. It's not, for me, no, it's a no brainer. I'm believing Peter tonight that you have to repent of your sin. And I wanna cover some territory tonight I don't know about you, but the Bible says times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord when you repent. It's awful quiet. Amen. That is when you say that you're sincerely sorry for the things that you do that are contrary to the word of God. When you tell the Lord you're sorry for something you said or something you've done and you ask him for forgiveness. Amen. And you are sincerely sorry. You don't do it in a pretense, and I've seen people do it, that they uh, say they're sorry, but they don't mean it. Gosh, it's quiet in this place. Amen. I'll say it to you this way. My wife says, every time I apologize, just tell me you're sorry and don't add a but in there. Can I get a witness in you? Just tell me you're sorry and shut up. Can I get a witness? Amen. The idea is that we have to be sincerely sorry for the things that we've done. And repentance is only, as only half of it is saying that we're sorry. The other half of repentance is doing a 180 and going in the other direction. So if we really want to get in the presence of God and we really want to walk with God and do the things of God, when we say we're sorry, we not only have to stop doing the things we were doing, now we've got to start doing the right thing. 
Hello. We've got to start saying the right things. We start, we have to start doing the right thing. Repentance, amen, is a is 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 a 360 thing. 180 of it is saying you're sorry. The other 180 is doing things correctly. Amen. In here, uh, these people did not have access to the presence of God. They did not have access to their deliverance. <clears throat> this man who was lame at the gate was a believer. Obviously, he had to be in order to receive his healing. These other people, and it said here, that they needed to accept Jesus as their Savior. They had not yet been born again. They did not have the rights and privileges of being a servant of God. And so they needed to repent. Amen. Somebody say repent. Amen. 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 Repentance to some people is difficult, but in reality, it allows you to have a right relationship with the Lord. When we do it in the earth, when we say we're sorry to somebody, the relationship that we had may be strained before, but when we sincerely apologize to somebody, it restores our relationship. Can I get a witness, amen? If you say or do the wrong thing and you apologize, your relationship is now restored and you have repented of whatever it is you said or did. Can I get a witness, amen? And so with Jesus, it's the same thing. You have a personal relationship with the Lord, and when you repent, your relationship with the, the Lord is restored. And here Peter is saying to these people that the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord when we repent and when we ask God to forgive us of our sin. Amen. We are in a situation, amen, tonight that the Bible says that God at one time winked in ignorance, but now he commands everyone to repent. Amen. He doesn't, amen, look the other way anymore. He doesn't, amen, just say, okay, you can keep doing whatever you want to do. But you have to stop where you're going. You have to ask God for forgiveness, and then you have to get restored. Amen. God's intention for us, amen, in restoration is to go in the direction that God has for us. Amen. We need God's help. We need God's guidance. We need God's direction. Amen. And when we're not going the right direction, then we need to take some time and have ourselves a prayer meeting. Hello. We need to have a prayer meeting to where we can make things right with the Lord. Amen. And get restored in the things of God. Hello. God intended for us, amen, to follow his covenant. And in this case here, there are people that were living outside the covenant. And I know, amen, many people that don't live right all week long and come to church on Sunday and they want to receive everything that God has for them. And it can't be. Hello, it can't be because you have to have a right relationship with the Lord. And so when you come to church, if you would ask God for forgiveness, this is what I don't understand in some people's lives, that they want to go through situations, amen, and not ask for forgiveness and still have a right relationship with people. I don't know if you've ever known anybody, but I, I have known people on occasion that have said horrible things to me, and they have never, ever apologized. Now, I don't know about you, but that, that does not make for a good relationship with me. Hello. Hello. I don't mind, you know, I'll deal with it and I'll endure it or whatever, but I'm not going to go back for seconds. Can I get a witness? Amen. I'm not going back for seconds. Amen. I don't, I'm not holding it against them. I don't do that, but I'm not going to take it again. Amen. And if I get around them, sometimes I, I absolutely have to do it, and they do the same thing again, I just put the shield up. But there's not a relationship between us because of, of their attitude towards me, not necessarily mine toward them. But there's no relationship there, there's no communication. And the same thing with God, when there's things between us and the Lord, we have to take care of business. 
We have to pray and get things corrected with the Lord. And when we take the time to get it corrected, we then have a right relationship with the Lord. And once we get things taken care of, now everything that's in the kingdom belongs to us. Amen. When we were sinners and we didn't obey the Lord and we got born again, there's certain things that took place. When we read in the letters of Paul, we find that the Lord, amen, allowed us, amen, to receive the blessings of God. Amen. Okay, well, I didn't know that. Grab somebody's hand. Uh, Brianna's apartment is on fire. Uh, Joe's taking her home. We're going to grieve for Brianna right now. <laughs> Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we believe for Brianda right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, to save that apartment building. Lord, save her things, Lord, that's in her apartment. Lord, those things that belong to Brianda and Isaac and all the family that's there. Lord, let your blessing be there, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Save and help, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, help us now, Father God, in the name of Jesus. We'll give you glory. We'll give you praise. We'll give you honor. Hallelujah. Touched by your mighty power in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless them, Father God. Spare that apartment. In Jesus' name. Thank you. Amen. Send the help they need, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Amen. 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 We had a testimony years ago of a couple whose apartment was on fire. They worked at the same place. And they were on their way home and they said, let's just agree that everything of ours is going to be all right. Um, it was a big apartment complex, but they said, it is possible for God to spare our apartment. And when they got home, everything was there, was fine. It was a little water damage. Nothing in their apartment was lost. They saved it all. Amen. God can do it. Amen. I wanted to, I want to finish this because I feel like it's important tonight about repentance. We're going to share a few more things. But uh, when Jesus died on the cross, this is really important tonight because so many people feel like what he did did, he did it automatically. And when he died, he did suffer for everyone's sin. When he died, he did defeat every principality and power. When he took 39 stripes, it was for everyone's healing. And I agree with those things. But they are not received that way automatically. They're not appropriated unless you approach Christ and accept them. Everyone in here knows you have to be born again to enter the kingdom of heaven. You have to accept Jesus as your Savior. He did die on the cross for you, but you have to accept it. Romans 10, 9 and 10 says you have to believe in your heart and confess with your mouth so that you can truly be saved and be born again. And so there are things you have to do to receive from the Lord. There are things you have to do when you're sick. You have to receive healing. In James, the fifth chapter, it talks about anointing with oil and if you anoint with oil, the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And if he committed sins, they'd be forgiven. And so you got to pray about it. If you can get everything automatic, I don't mean this in a negative way. If I got saved once and I never needed to pray again, I'll go home tonight. If I'm saved forever and I don't have to do anything else, I'll see you all later. Amen. I won't suffer or be afflicted or have any more trouble ever again. But it doesn't work that way. And I'll guarantee I'll give you a challenge. Go home and mow your lawn and never mow it again. Can I get a witness? Amen. <laughs> Go home and wash your dishes and never wash them again. Can I get a witness? Amen. Go home and wash your clothes just one time and never wash them again. Hello. It won't work. You're going to have to do it again and again and again and again and again. In the same way with your Christian walk, when you say or do something wrong, you've got to make restitution. You've got to get it corrected. 
and you'll have an up-to-date experience with the Lord. Life teaches us these things. Amen. If you say the wrong thing to one of your friends, if you say the wrong thing to your boss, hello, if you say the wrong thing to your wife or your husband, you will not have a good relationship until you get it fixed up. Can I get a witness? Amen. It's only happened to me one time. Thank the Lord. But I forgot my wife's birthday just once. Her birthday is one week after our anniversary. And I spent much time remembering the anniversary. And I did the anniversary right. And I got all the good things. Amen. And somehow I let the birthday slip. That's not a good thing. Somebody say amen. <laughs> and I came home from work, and I could tell Linda was upset. And so while I came home from work, and I was sitting, and I wasn't thinking about things, I began to meditate on what she could be upset about. And I thought about the date, and I said, oh my gosh, it's her birthday. Amen. So I said, I'll be right back. Amen. Can I get a witness? I'll be right back. Hello. <laughs> and I went and I got the stuff I needed. Amen. And she said, you lucky <laughs> that you remembered. I know this only happened to me. Amen. It's not good when you forget birthdays. Amen. I, uh, I like the things of God. And God has an order to things. He has direction that people need to listen to. There's an order to life. There's an order to your day. There's an order to spiritual things. And you can't change God's order. And when you get involved in the order of stuff, you can begin to get blessed by the Word of God and the Spirit of God. It doesn't do us any good to try to say that we've never ever been sick and try to look spiritual like we've never ever been sick in our life and try to tell somebody we're so spiritual we've never been sick. It's a bald-faced lie. You have been sick and you've probably been sick many times. Amen. Or you never made any mistakes. Once you got saved, you were saved and you never never did make a mistake since you got saved. It's a bald-faced lie. Yes, you did. Hello. <laughs> it's true. And so you've got to make things right. You've got to keep your relationship right with the Lord because all of us have said and done things since we've been saved that's not pleasing to God. And so when we ask God for forgiveness or if we have to go to someone and get it straightened out, we keep our relationships right with the Lord and with each other. And sometimes we maybe didn't even do it on purpose. But if we've said something or done something that's offended somebody, or if we said something that's contrary to the Word of God, we need to get it corrected. Amen. And once we get it corrected, now we can be refreshed in times a refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. We can get restored. Amen. I don't know how many times I've said this, but when we come into the church, we can receive uh, the benefits that Jesus paid for us to receive. But there's things we have to do. We, we use the word justification. We use the word atonement. We use the word regeneration. We use other words that are spiritual uh, uh, principles that when Jesus died on the cross he paid for us to have certain things when we come to church we can get forgiven I don't care what's happened to you during the week if you can just ask God to forgive you don't even have to wait till you get here I know that but you can still get it in the church amen if you have some kind of something else going on a spirit buffeting you you can get delivered when you come to church. If you will praise the Lord, the Lord inhabits the praises of his people, and the devil will vacate your premises when you praise the Lord. We've had such a challenge with people because we don't sing their favorite song. Hello. 
I don't even know what your favorite song is, but if we can get you to worship the Lord, you can get rid of the devil. And I don't care if we're singing something else. Sing your favorite song. Amen. You can go contrary to everything else. Just get set free. Hello. Praise the Lord. Worship the Lord and get the principle. Shout hallelujah. I got delivered. Amen. When I praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. I realize that every time I come to church, I can have an experience with God. I can be delivered. I can I can learn something new. I can be refreshed. I can I can receive from God. And I don't understand going to church and not receiving something from the Lord. I don't understand when he paid for so many things to happen and take place that people can go to church and they just want to go at a very minimum. Praise the Lord for a couple minutes. Amen. Do whatever and go home and never receive something from God. I don't know about anybody else. I got a battle next week, and I want the power of God to show up for me because there are situations that I got addressed that I need some help with. Amen. And I want God's power and His glory and His anointing to touch me and minister to me. And I don't care what songs we sing. I come to praise the Lord. I came to give Him glory. I came to honor Him. Amen. I don't care. It doesn't matter to me what song we sing. I came to tell the king I love him. He's the greatest thing that ever happened to me. And I love the word of God. I, I love to hear it preach. And I love to understand what it says. It sets me free. The Bible says you will know the truth. And the truth will set you free or make you free. I like to be free tonight. I like to get set free. When the word of God says greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. And I'm going to go out there and have a fist fight, so to speak, with the devil, because Jesus set me free and gave me power again. God intended for me, amen, to have a right relationship with him. And I have to realize that also when I'm praying and when I'm studying, amen, I can put that information in my spirit and it changes my day. It changes my circumstance and situations. But I have to do something with it. I have to read it, and then I have to get it in my spirit, and then I have to trust and believe that it's God's word, and he'll back it up and verify it. I know lots of people that do not trust in the Lord. I know lots of people that even though the Bible gives them a promise, they have not yet appropriated it and received it as their own, and they come into church bound, and they leave bound because they don't truly trust what it says. So I feel quiet in this place. Amen. I learned a long time ago with the Lord. He said, not only do I need to learn what the Bible says, but I also need to learn to trust the person that said it to me. That the person that spoke this word is Jesus Christ, and he can be trusted. Yeah. Hello. When I read something in there, I realize that I it's up to me. But I'm trusting the Lord tonight that he's going to do what this book says for me. And I put my confidence in God. And I'm going to keep it in there. Amen. And I'm going to receive what the word of God says. I trust the author of this book. Amen. I trust that he can be trusted. I trust in what he said. I trust in what he died for. I trust in his suffering for me. Amen. I believe that he can do what he said he could do. And he said he made me accepted in the beloved. And as I said this morning, move over a little bit because I'm in the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Nobody can kick me out. Amen. I'm the only one that can do something stupid to get me out of there. Amen. I'm in the kingdom. Amen. And God intended for me to, to continue in this walk and relationship with him. So I get up in the morning and I pray. I pray in the noonday and I continue with my communication with the Lord all day long. When I get up, I do it again. It's not something I just do on Sunday. Then I got to read or hear it. You can hear it any different ways. You got tapes, CDs, DVDs, every kind of ABCD or whatever you want. It's on the computer. You can hear it, amen. And you can put it in your spirit and it can help you. Get through the day. Can I get a witness? Amen. 
when Peter was, was sharing these scriptures, this lame man that was completely crippled received his healing and his whole life changed because he believed in what Peter and John said to him. He believed it. He acted upon it. He got up on it and it changed his whole life. From that day forward, he was never the same. He was completely healed. And I don't know what he did, but he probably went out and got a job. He went out and paid his own bills. He began to do the things he needed to do. From that day forward, he was never begging for alms or money or anything else ever again. He was going to go out and serve the Lord and do the things he needed to do. And I'm finding that people are trying to change what God's Word says. People are trying to have some kind of a shortcut, but we don't, nature itself shows us we can't do that. You can't say something harsh to someone you love and never apologize to them if you want a right relationship. Hello? Can I get a witness? Amen. If you say something to anybody, I don't care. You say something bad to your dog, your dog is not going to like you until you apologize. Amen. Works the other way too. The other day, my dogs, I really, I'm, we're going to have to work on them. We like to buy a bunch of bananas every time we go to the store. We like to try to grab a banana, at least one a day. And our dog got up on the counter and grabbed that bunch of bananas and took it outside. Amen. They can't peel them, thank the Lord. And there was teeth marks on one of the bananas. Can I get a witness? Amen. They were trying to take the bananas outside and eat the bananas. Amen. They have good dog food. We have good healthy treats for them. They get fed. But yeah, they're going to take them. And we took them. <laughs> Linda came home and she took those bananas and looked at those dogs and said, did you do this? We like to say that because they know what we're talking about. Did you do this? And my dogs will duck their head. What? I don't know how they know. We know they know what we're talking about. They're not supposed to do that. Amen. Our relationship needs to get restored here. Can we get a witness? Amen. You took my banana. I don't like it. Amen. We have to have a right relationship. And so they will, they will feel bad. And they'll jump in your lap. And they'll put their heads down. But they'll know that they did something wrong. You can't go anywhere in any place that when you say something wrong to somebody that there isn't some kind of an apology that needs to be made. You can't have a relationship anywhere, any way with anyone unless you learn the act of repentance. It's awful quiet in this church. You can't do it, amen. And I met people that do not want to apologize and want to have a relationship with God and you can't do it. I met people that are all face liars that said they've never sinned since they got saved. It's not true. I don't, the only person I know that's perfect is Jesus. Is your name Jesus? Amen. And did you die on the cross? Then you messed up. Can I get a witness? Amen. <laughs> and so did I. Amen. We are working on becoming better at being a Christian. We've talked about things. Our prayer life is getting better. We do not pray crazy prayers anymore. We pray in line with God's word. In our church, we see testimony after testimony after testimony of people receiving something from God because they did it correctly. They prayed and asked God for something in line with his word, and God blessed them. In some cases, as I shared before, that in some cases I have prayed for over a year about something, yet I did still receive it, amen. It took a while to get there, and I don't know how many strongholds were there, but they finally all got broken, and here came the answer to prayer. I believe in what I'm doing. We do it every day. We do it all the time because it's God's principles, and they work. It's like gravity, amen, or any other principle in the earth, amen. God will honor his word, but he won't honor you if you want to do a shortcut and you don't want to apologize and you don't want to repent and you want to lie about your spiritual experience. It won't help you, amen. 
being honest is really good. In fact, my, when my prayer, I like to try to take some part of my day in there and say, God, if I've said something or did something wrong, forgive me. I may not even be aware of it, but if I said something, please forgive me because I want to have a right relationship with you. I don't want to walk through the earth saying I never did something wrong or never been sick. Come on, I know people that said that and I've seen people that, I know people that seen them sick like a dog. Can I get a witness? Same person that said he'd never been sick, amen, had the flu so bad he almost died. Can I get a witness, amen? You're a liar. Better for you to repent and get it straightened out, amen. Hallelujah. I'm in trouble with that, amen. We actually had a guy in the church years ago, this way before us, pastor. And this man testified the fact. He said, I'm so glad that I've never missed God. He said, every time God asks me to do something, I do it. I've never failed the Lord. <laughs> you want to do this? You want to back up because you know the lightning is going to come and you don't want it to hit you. It's a lie. There's two things that we could we could address tonight. One's are sin of commission, and others the sin of omission. A sin of commission is a sin that you know that you did is wrong. For example, you lied to somebody, and you know lying is bad. A sin of omission is something you were supposed to do for somebody and you didn't do it and you may not be, be aware that you were supposed to do it. Hello? Sin is sin. Can I get a witness? Amen. You missed it. Amen. It's awful quiet. Yes. Amen. You omitted something you were supposed to do. You didn't do it. You may not be aware of it. There's other times where you kick the dog and throw the cat out. Can I get a witness? You know you did it. Come on. Amen. You sin and you have to repent and you do. Hallelujah. Amen. I'll give you a good example. I have gone home and my wife has been angry with me. I have no idea why. It's awful quiet in this place. Obviously I have said something or done something that was wrong. The awful quiet in this place. I don't know what it is. But I, after being married as long as I have, I've learned I'm going to repent. Amen. I'm going to apologize. <laughs> I don't know what I did, but amen, I'm in, I'm in trouble, so I'm going to apologize. Oh, y'all, y'all not like me. One time I went and I bought my wife flowers and she got mad at me. Amen. To this day, I do not know why. Amen. If I live to be 150, I will not know why, but she got mad from me buying her flowers. It doesn't happen all the time. Usually I get a good reaction from doing that. Amen? I feel quiet in this place. Amen? But I got in trouble this day. Amen? And I often find things that go wrong, and I don't know why. I've had times in raising my family, I thought everything was good and I go home and everybody would be in tears. And I do not have a clue as to why everybody's in tears, amen? And I'll have to figure out, I don't know what I did, in fact, I have no clue. But I'm going to get it fixed up, amen? And I'll say, let's all go get something to eat or I'll do something, let's go to the beach or go swimming or do something. We'll fix it up. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, the same thing can happen with the Lord because there's not a person in here that knows everything about the Bible. And there are things that you could omit that you don't know that you're omitting. Hello. And so if you want your relationship right with the Lord, you have to keep in prayer and ask him if you've missed it in some way that you can make it right and when you do learn, someday you'll realize something that you said or did was wrong. Then at that point, you can correct it. Amen. And then you can move on with your Christian experience. Amen. God has such wonderful blessings for people. 
But often we don't get in on them because we don't know, number one, what the Bible says. And number two, that we do not spend the time in prayer or reading our Bible to know the information so we can get it in there. Every time I read my Bible, it, it avails me information that tells me something about the covenant that's here. I suggest tonight, if you will go home and read the letters of Paul, especially places like in Ephesians, Galatians, Philippians, it gives you instructions of who you are in Christ Jesus. Corinthians often tells you how the church service should go and how things should work in the church itself. But when you start reading things that tell you who you are and what Jesus has done for you, it will change your life. It will change your life when you recognize what Christ has done for you in, the, in, in his offering and his sacrifice. Amen. I, I at times, uh, don't always know what to do. And at times I realize that God will put me in a situation and I use the expression, he throws me in the water and I learn how to swim later. And I realize I'm supposed to do something, but I don't know what it is. So I'll try to figure it out as I go. And sometimes someone will come, sometimes you need to help them. Sometimes you need to give somebody a ride. Sometimes you need to do something. Sometimes you just need to sit and talk with somebody. But somehow or another, you know you're supposed to do something. Hello? You're supposed to respond, and so you're able to listen to the Holy Spirit and then begin to fulfill what your responsibility is. Amen. Now, I wish things were easier, and I really wish at times I understood more about people. Because sometimes people get upset. Sometimes people are, uh, how can I say, you know, they maybe misunderstand something that's being said or done. And so you don't always know what causes people to be upset. But if you want to have a good relationship with somebody, you go to them and you ask them, okay, why are you upset? What is it was said or done? It may not be you, maybe it was from somebody else. But you try to find this relationship to get it fixed so that that person will no longer be upset. When Peter, when Peter, uh, amen, ministered to the Lord, and, and the, many times Peter would, would say things and do things that got himself into trouble. Come on, he had a tendency to stick his foot in his mouth. Can I get a witness? Amen. <laughs> when, when Jesus was going to the cross, Peter said he would never deny him. And the Lord said, you're going to deny me three times. And we know what happened, that Peter went and denied the Lord, and he went out and he wept bitterly. He did it, he sinned, and all of them forsook the Lord and ran away in the Garden of Gethsemane. All of them failed the Lord in the Garden. When Jesus died, he told, amen, uh, the the disciples he was talking to, go get everybody, and he specifically mentioned Peter and said, and go get Peter and bring him to me. And so Jesus forgave Peter, Peter got restored, and after he was filled with the Spirit, every one of those guys that disobeyed the Lord was after they were filled with the Spirit, every one of them was willing to give their life to the Lord and they did, except for John, and they tried to kill him, and they didn't, they couldn't do it. So what I'm saying tonight is we have, we have a tremendous blessing that God has bestowed upon us in our relationship with Him. And it's a great privilege for us to be able to pray and enter into the things of God and enjoy them. It doesn't do us any good to have a two-minute prayer meeting or a two-minute Bible study. Unless you are really fast at speed reading, can I get a witness? Amen. Unless you can really digest, amen, something in two minutes, and something, amen, you're not going to have a relationship with it. And I'll guarantee you, if I go home tonight and I talk to Linda for two minutes and I won't speak to her again, I will be seriously in trouble before the night is over. Amen. And definitely tomorrow. Amen. It won't work. Hello? My dogs won't even let me get away with the two-minute 
conversation. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to say this and we're going to take time to pray. When we get this relationship going with the Lord every day, pretty soon, it's not a burden to pray. It's not a burden to sing and worship the Lord. It's not a burden to do the things we need to do. It is amazing to me that people want me to do something just specifically for them. How hard would it be for us to have a church service and for us to sing everybody's favorite song? Hello? It's impossible. I couldn't do it. Going back to the third step, what temperature can I set it at that's going to please everybody? I can't, I can't do it. If you're too hot, amen, don't dress warm. If you're cold, put a jacket on, amen. That's all I can suggest, amen. I can't set that thing to please everybody. Nobody can. So when we start having wonderful relationship with the Lord, great things begin to happen. This year has been a, a, a different kind of year for me to see these wonderful things begin to happen and the breakthroughs that we have. We prayed and prayed and prayed, and now we're beginning to see some great things happen. And it's time that we thank God for what he's doing. Maybe you didn't get a miracle yet, but it's time you thank the Lord for the miracles he gave other people. It's time you rejoice for all other people that got blessed and got delivered. It's time that you had a Holy Ghost fit over somebody else getting blessed. Amen. Instead of going home and having a, oh, nobody loves me, nobody cares about me attitude. Amen. Thank the Lord for somebody, amen, that got their miracle. I might be next on the list. Hallelujah. Amen. God can use me on, on, on those situations. Amen. We're going to do this. We're going to take a minute to pray. But this morning I was sharing some things, and, and what I want to finish on is this, is I want to be used of the Lord in this year. And I don't always know what that is. And so when the Lord begins to move by His Spirit, the only thing I can do is avail myself to the Holy Spirit and let Him use me as He sees fit. Doesn't matter what it is, it's just that I want God to use me. If I don't yield myself to the Holy Spirit, or if I don't have a right attitude, i got to keep myself in an attitude that I can be used by God. I can't live any kind of life and come on Sunday and expect to be used by the Lord. He won't do it. Amen. But if I keep myself in an attitude of prayer, when the opportunity arises, I like to be on the front lines where I can be a blessing to somebody. Amen. That's what, that's what Peter's talking about. Let's get in, in, in a place of refreshing, in a place of renewing where the Holy Spirit can use us no matter where we are, in the grocery store, at home, at work, whatever. God can bless us. Amen. Would you bow your heads with me? We're going to take a minute and we're going to pray. Father, we thank you tonight in the mighty name of Jesus for our service and we thank you for your wonderful blessings. Lord, we thank you that, Lord, we are all vessels of yours and we want to be used by you in this year. And, Lord, we know we have to keep a right attitude and a right relationship with you. And so, Lord, tonight we say, use us, Lord, and help us, Lord, to repent and to keep our, our spirit right with you. And when we say things or do things that's not pleasing, Lord, help us to be humble enough to apologize and to keep our attitude right, that we can be in right standing with your Holy Spirit. Thank you because you said in 1 John, if we confess our sins, you're faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let your Holy Spirit use us, Lord, in this year. We want to be used so much, Lord. Lord, let your presence use us for your glory. We give you the glory and the praise and the honor. We ask these things tonight in your name, the name of Jesus, and everyone said, Amen. 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 Is there anyone here tonight that you would like prayer for something, sick in body or anything? If you'll come, then we'll pray with you tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Would you stand with me, please? We're going to...
dismiss in a word of prayer. One more time, would you turn to your neighbor and tell him, I love you and you can't do nothing about it. Tell him, I love you and you can't do nothing about it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Brother Johnny, would you dismiss us tonight? Amen. God bless you tonight. Amen. Greet someone before you leave and tell me where they can. God bless you.